animus cities in the night. These are the kind of shots that I would love to look at in a rainy night, 2am, listening to lo-fi music. And if you are watching this video right now, you are probably one of the many Blender artists or enthusiasts who have already tried to create something similar to your favorite animals inside Blender. Well, if that is the case, then this video is exactly for you. Because in this video, I will break down the process of how this animation was made inside Blender and Photoshop. So the first step was to import some buildings into Blender. Of course I used Kitpatch to save me some time, because this whole animation is mostly about what we do in Photoshop and the 2D stage, and we are just gonna use the 3D as a base to begin with. But you got to remember, having some textures and small details on your buildings would really help and save you from a lot of trouble in the 2D stage. So you don't have to waste your time on small details and skip the small bits and focus on the overall image. Oh, by the way, I lost the original file of the scene, so I had to redo this part and just record it really quickly. Put a camera in front of your buildings, import an HDRI for the lighting. For this scene, I used Shanghai Bond HDRI, which you can get from Poly Heaven. I set on a lower number, 0.3, and then you can put some lights under your buildings. I use some area lights with blue and purple colors. We jump back into the camera view, and let's see how it looks in the rendered view. As I said, the 3D is just a base that you're gonna use to paint over in Photoshop, so you can use EV or Cycles for rendering this, it doesn't really matter. With that simple light setup, it's time to render the scene. Again, in this scene, like my previous video, I'm gonna render in three different layers, a foreground, a midground, and a background. Obviously, I don't have the buildings here. So we're gonna need a foreground, a midground, and a background, and we're gonna render them on separate layers. Well, unfortunately, my blender crashed. <laughs> Guys, I got a potato laptop, but hey, that's the whole point of this channel. So anybody with any kind of computer or laptop can follow along and create beautiful renders. You can after the layers are rendered, we gotta take them to Photoshop. And I decided to use the single building, render this one to show you. I imported this layer into Photoshop just to paint over on top of it as an example. The same process applies to all of the layers and you can use it on all of your buildings. I just added this background to be able to see better. What you can do here is to import images like this from cities and cut out some parts of them and combine them with your render. Let's just do a quick test and example. For example, this part here, you can simply choose any tool and you can just cut it. All right, copy and paste, turn this off. There you go. You can put it on different screen mode. I'm gonna go for lighten. Let's try out some other parts. How about this part? I got these pictures online. You can use any picture you want. Oh. Wait a minute, is that legal? Uh, well, I'm not really sure. You guys might want to get your pictures from somewhere that is copyright free just to avoid any issues. And I'm going to use these pictures only for the purpose of this tutorial. So let's copy this. We can move it here. We can copy it multiple times and just put it wherever you want in the image. After this step is done, we're just gonna go up here, hit Ctrl Shift E and merge all the layers together. Now it's time to transform its look. So let's go to the filters, filter gallery. Let's just add angle strokes. You can adjust these numbers here. I'm gonna go for something around 30. Sharpness at zero. We'll go again into filters and this time you can add this one next to it. Ascented edges. You can also use the posterize effect. 
copy this layer and paste it again. Go to image, adjustment, and just reduce the opacity. Add a blur filter. So this is how you can achieve this look. You can just go for different looks. This is the raw render with some photos on top of it. And these ones next to it are just the same picture with the filters applied. So you can see we went from this look to this. You can follow the same steps and achieve the same results for all of your layers. Next, it is time to import them back into Blender. And to do that, we must export these images again as PNGs, as we don't want any background. Back in Blender, I imported the layers from Photoshop and put them just in the right order foreground, midground, a second midground, and the background. I added the camera and the sky in the background. Then I added the keyframe to the camera and just moved it forward. That's how you can achieve a parallax effect. That was it. So simple, right? But wait a minute, just to spice things up, I thought why not add more elements to it while we're in Blender before rendering it out? Well, the city has already a futuristic theme to it. Kinda looks like cyberpunk. And I thought why not? Let's add a hologram veil and a fish. And two people just sitting here on the rooftop watching. Well, to do that, I needed to get some assets. I went on Sketchfab and found this veil model on it which already was animated. It saved me a lot of time, honestly. I also found this fish model, which was animated as well. I downloaded them, brought them back into Blender, and just, I had to simply put them in the right place. Then I had to make this hologram effect, which is actually quite easy. Let me just use the fish as an example to show you. And I'm just gonna use this monkey to show you how I made this material. Ducky 3 d has a tutorial about this material. I'll put the link to that down in the description if you want to check it out. It's quite simple, this material. If you take a look at the notes, there's not many to figure out. It's quite easy. There's a mix shader, an emission node with the color that you want, a transparent BSDF, there's a layer weight, a color ramp, and well, this part is what I added. There's a mix RGB node and a wave texture. I put it on the Z axis and Using the mix RGB node, I can determine how much of the wave texture is actually visible. I put it on a quite low number because I thought it looks better, but you can crank it up if you want. You can really experiment with it, see what you like. I like to put it on the Z so I get this horizontal lines. You can also animate this if you want. Anyway, that is the hologram material I used and it is quite easy to make. And there are more ways to make this look way cooler. I think for the fish, I used this method. Just go on and add a decimate modifier and a wireframe modifier. Reduce the thickness. The decimate modifier, it should be above the wireframe. Except for giving it like this kind of cool look, you can also animate it. Or, or just reduce the details if this is too much for you. Now just to wrap up this look and finish it, duplicate this model. And on the second model that we just duplicated, disable the modifiers. That's it, you have your hologram material. In the end, before I go on and hit render, I went on Mixamo and just got some characters with some animations so I could put them in the foreground, just sitting on the rooftop chilling looking at the view of the city. And with that finished, I was ready to render. And this is the final result. I hope you enjoyed the video, thanks for watching and I'll see you next time.